بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم قال المصنف رحمه الله نفعنا وغبي ونفعنا الله به وبكل أجمعين What do we leave off? Al-Hakim. 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 قال المصنف رحمه الله نفعنا الله به وبكم أجمعين الحكم الذي لا رد للقضاء قال المصنف رحمه الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيد محمد وعليه وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا قال المصنف رحمه الله ونفعنا الله به وبكم أجمعين Al-Hakamu, sometimes that's translated as the judge. Al-Ladhi la radda li qadai, the one who no one can repose his decree. Wa la mu'aqiba li hukmi, and no one can reverse his ruling, reverse or revise his ruling. Wa kila al-Hakamu, al-Hakami, wa al-Hakimi, yarji'ani ila ma'al al-Mali. And both al-hakam and al-hakim, both of which can be translated as the judge or the ruler. Uh, return to the uh, meaning of prevention. So through, through his judgment, he prevents, facilitates something and prevents other things. Amandani al-ulumu حكما لأنها تنزع الموصوفين بها من اسم الجاهل. And so from this perspective, العلوم or knowledge or sciences are referred to as as حكم, as a ruling or a judgment because they they prevent they pull one who is described of them uh, away from the name of ignorance or being ignorant, jahil. So, uh, uh, Zaruk says in terms of both uh, devoting ourselves to Allah through this name and sometimes how we adorn ourselves with that name. So it says concerning... Is that a screen? 28, start at 28. So he says, Al-Hakam, wa taqarrubu bihad al-ism, drawing close to Allah through this name. Drawing close to Allah, to Allah through this name. From the direction of devotion is by taking any complaint we might have to Him in everything. Why? Because He's the one who can rule in that thing which vexes us. وَتَرْكِ الشَّكْوَى لِغَيْرِهِ بِكُلِّ حَالِ And leaving complaining to anyone other than Allah in every situation. وَمْجِيَةِ التَّخَلُّقِ And from the direction of adorning ourselves with this characteristic. And تَكُونَ حَكَمًا بَيْنَ الْقَلْبِكَ وَنَفْسِ That you are a ruler between your heart and your nafs. Or your ego. Then tanzara bainahuma bil insafi wa tarqi ta'awi wa l'inhiraf. And so that you look upon both of them with uh, justice and fairness and you leave off any false claims or any uh, deviation away from the truth. Because that, that will burden our soul. So we want to rule justly concerning our soul. So it's as if he's saying, when we deviate from the truth and then we've exposed our soul to ruination, then 
we've, we've ruled unjustly against our soul. It's as if we gave the ruling of, of Jahannam or doom to, to our souls. ثم قال العدل معناه العادل so عدل which is in its form and structure is a, is a verb is a, is, a, is a noun rather but it has the meaning of the active participle العادل so sometimes the noun is used descriptively because the described is an embodiment of that attribute so Allah is an embodiment of Justice. And so therefore, al adli. So, in the Allah yaqru bil adli wa ihsan wa taib bil qurba. Allah commands justice, but Allah describes as an adli ya al adil. So, sometimes, sometimes it's a, a adil al mutlaq. So, the absolute, uh, absolute just. One who's absolutely just epitomizes justice and so in that sense an atman, so an embodiment of justice and he's the one from whom emanates the action of justice which is the opposite of tyranny and oppression so who, one who knows that Allah is just, then he doesn't consider anything in his heart to be ugly. So Because everything is a manifestation of Allah's justice. Allah's justice is beautiful in that sense. And no ruling of Allah is weighty for him or her because it emanates from Allah's justice, even though it might be something that, because of our background, our education, our circumstances, it, it might be uh, something that. Uh, we don't naturally incline towards. Once we once we're totally uh, submitted, submissive unto Allah Ta'ala, then we're naturally inclined towards everything that the divine law brings. Nothing causes us uh, uh, any uh, discomfort, nothing or any hesitation. No one of you truly believes until their very inclination is in accordance with what I have brought. And so our, our environment, what they call, uh, they refer to as the zeitgeist, the spirit of our times, can lead us to incline away from some things that are the divine law sanctions. And our our environment, our upbringing, the things we've been exposed to. So I'll give you an example. I probably mentioned this before. Repetition is a wonderful pedagogical tool. That's a fancy way of saying a teaching instrument. <laughs> so when I was when I became Muslim, the virtually every single book that talked about Islam would say, is Islam means submission to the will of God. Islam means submission to the will of God. And people were good with that because the idea of submission was just part of the culture. So as 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 to use current parlance, we, we grew up in a world of hierarchical, patriarchal normalcy, for lack of better words. And so the idea of submitting to authority was just part of the environment. And so the idea of submitting to God was just flowed naturally from that. 
Now, when you look at definitions of Islam, they say Islam is peace. Right? Islam is peace. And it's, as opposed to Islam is the religion of, religion of submission, Islam is the religion of peace. Because the, the environment has changed. And the, the idea, generally speaking, in the society of submitting to anyone is foreign. No one wants to submit. Everyone wants to be liberated. You have women's liberation, now you have men's liberation, you have black liberation, now you have white liberation. Like white people think they're the most oppressed people on the planet. Now there's, there's surveys out there. I'm not making this stuff up. And so everyone wants to be liberated, which means what? No one wants to submit to anybody. And so Islam, so the idea of submitting to God goes against the acculturation and the socialization that's being ingrained in people. And so they know what is thaqil, to find thaqil, heavy, minhu hukman. Any ruling emanating from them. Bel yastaqbil hukmahu darida wa wa yasbiru taht al balai bi ghairi shakwa. And so a person greets Allah's ruling with with pleasure, satisfaction, and patient and patiently endures any uh, tribulation without complaining. Uh, because he or she knows Allah is just. So I might not like this, but it's just because it's coming from Allah, who is Ab, who is the embodiment of justice. And so we were talking a couple minutes ago, another feature of our time is a lot of Muslims now understand justice in a way that Muslims have never understood justice. And that is, Muslims have always understood justice as being consistent and compatible with the divine law. So there's no justice that contradicts the Sharia. For a lot of Muslims now, that consideration is gone. And justice is defined as it's defined in the contemporary society. <coughs> justice is justice according to Foucault. Justice is justice according to Marx. Or justice is justice according to Herbert Marcuse. So the, the whole idea that you can be unjust to those who historically have oppressed you, and that's justice, that's more cool stuff. But it's definitely not Islam. So on these, on these uh, uh, matrices, if you will, you, if you draw a line, and then you have lines above and below, above are the historical oppressors. The historical oppressors are white, heterosexual, male, rich people. And the historically oppressed are females, people described as people of color, homosexuals, or the whole gamut, LGBTQI, uh, poor people. And so those below the spectrum behave in ways those above formally behave towards them in their quest for what they describe as justice, and that's not injustice because they've been historically oppressed. And so there's a whole study of all this. And a lot of Muslims are bought into that. And the whole, the, whole, the whole paradigm is based on group identity. If you're in one of these groups, there's no exception. That's not Islam. Well, it tells you, 
No individual bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another. So we can, as a Muslim, just automatically rule against someone as an, a privileged oppressor because they happen to be in a group that historically has been defined as privileged oppressors. We have to accept and judge each person on their merit. That's why we're going to we stand before Allah, Yawm al qiyamati for that. As individuals, we're not going to stand before Allah as a member of a group. I'm a woman, so I'm going to be judged as a woman. And I'll be excused for this, that, or the other because I was oppressed. And I only did whatever I did as a means to escape my oppression, even though it was sinful. Or as a male, or as an African American, or as a, a homosexual, or as a this, that, or the other. Well, a lot of Muslims are brought into this whole scheme of group identity and ways of understanding oppression and liberation and that, that divorce any consideration of revelation, prophetic teachings, and the divine law. Does that sound like something I'm making up? Yeah, that's, that's what's happening. I'm not making it up. May Allah have mercy on us. Tayyip. Thumma qal and then uh, so Ahmed Zarouk Rahimullah says concerning this characteristic أَتَقَرُّبُوا بِهَذَا الْإِسْمِ So drawing uh, or drawing close to Allah through the system uh, this name تَعَلُّقَلْ يعني devotion like you, you're passionately attached to Allah so we're just translating that as devotion and تَخَافَ الصَّتْوَ عَبْلِهِ uh, that you, that one, that you fear the authority that emanates from his justice. So justice is coupled with authority, and that authority might require or impose hardship on us to check our own injustice. What tarjuwa rukati So the, this. He's, he's saying the person should stay between fear and hope. So he, he fears or she fears satwata uh, adlihi, the authority of his justice, wa tarjuwa, and the person hopes for rukati fatlihi, the gentleness of his grace. So, and that's justice. So, an adl is not deviating from the path. As one who deviates from the path, you say, Yadinu Anit Tariq. He deviated from the path. So, justice is to stay in, in the middle. So, one of the, the, the means we stay in the middle is between fear and hope. Wala ta'man, wala ta'mana min matrihi. And he or she doesn't feel secure from Allah Ta'ala's. Uh, that they will escape something challenging in the plan that Allah has for their life or for this world. So we don't think, oh, Allah will never test me because I do tahajjud every night. Well, that, that means you might be the first one to be tested. Because people are tested according to their faith. The strength of your faith gets you up every night for tahajjud. أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ إِبْتِلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلَ فَأَمْثَلَ الْأَمْثَلَ The people most severely tested were the prophets. Why? Because they had the greatest faith. And then those closest to them and those closest to them. So a person who might be further safe from Allah Ta'ala's plan because they do tahajjud every night, they read their juz every day, that's actually making them more susceptible to being tested by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So they should be the, on guard more than the person who's just a total goof off and 
Their faith is very weak, so they couldn't bear a strong test. I like it was Hofik. And from the, uh, the direction of adorning ourselves with this character trait, and takuna adlan fi ahkam fi ahkamika, that you're just in those rulings and judgments that you make. Adnan fi athabika, that you're just in your actions. Adnan fi alsafi, that you're just in your characteristics. And so again, you're you're moderate. You're between this extreme or that extreme. And you're dressed. You're not shabby, but you're not extravagant. So you're not walking around, you have clean, neat, respectable clothing. You're not walking around with gold embroidery and just extravagant clothing. You're just in your clothing. You're just in your dealing. You're just in your rulings. Kulli. <coughs> And you don't uh, incline towards the extreme of falling short, nor the extreme of asset, uh, excess in all of your affairs. And so that's to be just. Adorning yourself with this particular name. Uh, just as in terms of being just in your diligence. There's a beautiful story. This is a brief story that I want to share from this book. This book is called Ta'ir to Suluk in American Muluk. It's a shot of a poem about spiritual wayfaring. So, uh, I, I really like this. ومن ومن اللطائف أن بعضهم رأى امرأة جميلة مع رجل قبيح قبيح المنظر فقال لها أترضين أن تكوني معه فقال قد أسدت يا هذا حيث لم حتى لم تترك التدبير إلى العديم الخبير. So it said uh, well, from the, a very uh, nice anecdote that one of the people saw a very beautiful woman with a very ugly man. And so he said to her, are you happy uh, that you're with him? And she said to him, you, you've uh, said something uh, very vile in that you haven't left the arrangement of things to the all-knowing and the well-informed. And also al-a'l, to one who is just. So she said, لَعَلَّ زَوْجِي أَحْسَنَ ثِيمَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَجَعَلَنِي ثَوَابَهُ She said, perhaps my husband had, was very good in his dealing with Allah, so Allah may be his reward. ثم قالت أنا فجعلني ثوابه ولعلي أسدت فيما بيني وبينه فجعله عقوبتي أفلا أرضى أرضى بحكم الحكيم العليم. So she said maybe I've been bad in my relation with Allah so he made him my punishment. And she said shouldn't I not should I not be pleased with the ruling of the, the wise and all-knowing judge. Sabra and shukr. Sabra and shukr. And being being having confidence in the ruling of Allah and in his justice and his his grace. الذي يوصل إليك أرابك برفق the one who and so Latif is sometimes translated the gentle sometimes as the subtle the one who delivers your needs to you with gentleness لا إله إلا الله نعم فنتك 
Also, sometimes someone who's beautiful on the outside is ugly. Their soul is ugly, and sometimes people who are not the most beautiful or attractive might be very beautiful inside their soul. You know, that's so very true. Be, so that could be a, a uh, blessing to her to have a person with a good soul yeah. potentially. That's very true. So I would just comment in one way that someone who's Namaludi, according to the standards of people, beautiful on the outside, who's ugly on the inside, becomes ugly on the outside. Because the lure is gone from them. And so they might have beautiful features, but you, don't, you can't stand looking at them. Because the darkness in their heart comes out through their, and the ugliness in their heart comes out through their entire being. Whereas someone that might be nominally ugly in terms of what the stereotypical beautiful features who has nur in their heart and the nur in their heart shines through their entire being. They're a beautiful person and, and you love to look at them you just in awe. Then hello. Right? Allah <laughs> almost time. But from one perspective, you're absolutely right. Especially the latter. A person can be stereotypically ugly, but because they're so beautiful in their character, in their heart, in their, their nature, their comportment, they're a beautiful person. The whole package. And a person is just, mashallah, so and so is just so beautiful. Hey. And the nur. Allah maj'a fi qalbi nura wa fi abasuri nura wa fi abufi asma'i nura wa fi sam'i nura. I usually say it in the poem. But the hadith in the thing. Allah maj'a fi qalbi nura wa fi basuri nura wa fi sam'i nura wa fi lisani nura wa bayna aydin bayna yadayya nura. ومن خلفي نورا عن يميني نورا عن شمالي نورا ومن فوقي نورا ومن تحتي نورا وفي جلدي نورا وفي عصبي نورا وفي عدلي نورا وفي عظمي نورا وفي شعري نورا فالله put light in my seeing and my hearing on my tongue on my, to my right, to my left, before me, behind me, above me, beneath me, in my heart, in my skin, in my hair, in my nerves, in my muscles, in my bones, wafidemi, in my blood, fidemi nura. That's a beautiful person. I, I don't care what they might look like, because they're, they're no one. They're, they're illuminated. And in the love. The one who delivers your needs to you with gentleness. And it said he's the one who knows the, the subtleties and intricacies of matters. So that's where the subtle, uh, as opposed to the gentle, and the problematic things, the subtleties in, that will unlock problematic things. And so these are from uh, uh, attributes and names associated with his essence. وَمِنْهُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَىٰ اللَّهُ لَطِيفٌ بِعِبَادِهِ And from it is the saying of Allah, Allah is latif in dealing with his servants. عَالِمٌ لِمُوَاضِعِ هَوَائِجِهِ And he knows uh, the areas of their need. But then, that's translated into a sifa, sifa to af'al, yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab, wa huwa al qawwi al aziz. He gives sustenance, and he is the mighty, to whom he pleases, he's the mighty and the, the strong and the mighty. And so, translating that knowledge into sustenance to meet those needs becomes uh, a name of, of his actions. Asma'u sifat al-af'al. 
وقيل معناه لطيف بالجميل بمعنى المجمل and it said that its meaning لطيف is beautiful meaning the one who beautifies فهو إذا من صفات الأفعال and from this direction it would be from the attributes of uh, his actions مجمل the one who beautifies طيب and what, uh, so he says, and so uh, Sheikh Ahmed Zarouk, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. All of this is from the blessings of Sheikh Abu Hassan al Shadili. So we, we originally, we, the book, the basic book, Imam Suyuti, Shadili. And Ahmed Zarouk, and Kibar al Rijal. Sicilian Tashadiliya. And then we're reading the, the book of Al-Izm al Abdul Salam, who took the tariqah directly from Abu Hassan al Shadili, who was Shadili Kalam. Kuba had the Ulu Min Barakat al Imam Abdul Hassan al Shadili. All of this from the blessings of Abdul Hassan al Shadili. Rahimahullah and Afana will be your equal Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So, and Latif, <coughs> so he says, and Shaykh Ahmed Zarouk, وَتَقَرُّبُ بِهَادَ الْإِسْمِ Drawing close to Allah through this name. مَنْ جِيَةَ الْتَعَلُّقُ From the direction of devotion. بِالنَّظْرِ إِلَى لُطْفِهِ وَالْعَمَلِ عَلَيْهِ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Looking at Allah Ta'ala's gentleness in his creation. So look, the gentleness, we're, we're living witnesses to his gentleness right now. We're on something that's hurling through space at 24,000 miles an hour and we don't perceive any movement. But if you're in a jet that's going like Mach 1, the thing is rattling up. <laughs> Your car goes 100 miles an hour, like we were doing when we got through that accident <laughs> on 680 and tried to get here in decent time. Actually, we got up to 86. But if your tires aren't good, your car is like rattling. So forget 86 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. We're moving 24,000 miles an hour and we don't feel anything. That's from the lutuf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Allahumma ya latif. Utuf bina fi ma jara bihi al-maqadir. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Ya Allah, the most gentle, be gentle with us as you unfold your decree in our lives. So Allah is he's unfolding the decree. And we're on this earth. And this earth is moving 24,000 miles an hour. And we don't feel anything. Ya Latif. Ya Latif. Alhamdulillah. Wa tithkarihi inda kulli nazila. And remember his remember his, his gentleness in every calamity. And so you don't see a calamity as a calamity. You see the calamity as a manifestation of Allah's gentleness. Because it's an opportunity for us. The calamity is an opportunity for us. It's an opportunity for patience. And patience has an unlimited reward. <laughs> Patient ones are given their reward with no numerical limits. None. <laughs> فَمَنْ ظَنَّ ثِكَاكَ لُطْفِهِ أَنْ قَضَارِهِ فَذَلِكَ لِقُصُورِ نَظَرِ And whoever thinks that Allah's gentleness can be separated from his decree, that's owing to the, the limited nature of his vision. So when, whenever you think that this thing that seems to be a calamitous disaster is not a manifestation of Allah's lutuf, you need to look deeper. You need to look deeper. 
as you say, on this calamity, Allah is relieving my sins. By relieving my sins, Allah is distancing me from the hellfire. That's look of. So we have to always look deeply. Allahu Musta'an. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Al-Khabir. Al-Ladhi la ya'azubu anhu anhu al-akhbar al-ba'atinatu wa la yajri thinhulti wa al-malakuti shay'un wa la tataharruku dharratun wa la taskun wa la tataribu nafsun wa la tatma'in إلا أن يكون عنده خبرها. He says in Khabir that he is the one nothing is and nothing uh, 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 escapes uh, the the one whom not even those uh, information that's hidden escapes him. Our thoughts, things that are removed from our knowledge, they're not removed from the knowledge of Allah. Processes that we don't perceive of, Allah is informed concerning them. So there's, there are realms of, of metaphysical reality we don't even perceive. Allah is aware of those. So all, all things that are hidden, none of that escapes Allah. To say nothing of things that are visible. And nothing occurs neither in the uh, realm that's perceptible through... Uh, our senses, that's the mulk. The mulk is what we perceive through our senses, through our vision, our hearing, our touch, our smell, our taste. That's the mulk. Wal malakut. The malakut are those things we perceive through knowledge. And so the malakut is what we perceive through knowledge. So it's, it's, it's not readily visible. The malakut is also the deeper meanings associated with those things we perceive in the book. So, for example, if uh, we use this example a lot, but it's dated. If you come home and you find uh, there's a, a knife in your pillow on your bed. The reality of that is a knife in you. The, 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 me, the knowledge of that in the book is a knife with a pillow in it. <coughs> but what you perceive beyond that, that someone's giving you a message, you better move, get out of this neighborhood. That's from the Malakut. Because you only perceive that through knowledge and through thought, through experience. And what the Jabarut, in, in this way of looking at it, the Jabarut is the realm associated with Allah Ta'ala's decree and ordainment that produces the book and the Malakut. So it's the underlying foundation of the book, that which is perceptible uh, readily through our senses, and the Malakut, that, is percept that which is perceptible through knowledge and through experience. That is emanates from the foundation of Al Jabarut. So none of that escapes Allah. So Allah knows the meanings, the hidden meanings that we may or may not know associated with the mulk. So Allah knows the mulk and Allah knows the manakut. And the Jabarut emanates directly from Allah. And not even Adam moves, or the, uh, uh, the most minute thing moves, or attains stillness, except that Allah knows it. And there's no, there's no uh, soul that's uh, uh, agitated, or that's at peace, except that Allah knows it. Uh, so Allah has, is informed, or better than no, Allah is informed of all of that. And so it comes with the meaning of knowledge. And the ilma, ida udifa ila khafai al ba'atinati sumiya kibra. And so this comes with the meaning of knowledge, but knowledge 
that's, asso so that's uh, associated with hidden things. And when knowledge of hidden things becomes known, then it's called experience. <coughs> and so Allah being al-khabir as opposed to Ali is Allah knows all hidden things, or is informed of all hidden things, we could say. And so one who has that knowledge of hidden things is called informed. And so even we can say khibra as experience and the one who has it as being an expert. And so an expert possesses knowledge of things that aren't readily known to the general generality of people. So all of us know one and one is two. So you don't say, he or she is an expert in math if he or she knows one and one is two. Everyone knows one and one is two. Like the four-year-old child. Say, I saw one the black man. I love Sana. How much is one and one? If I have one finger, another finger, two. So we would say, Lord Ahmed is an expert. Well, one who knows advanced calculus. To a degree, most people don't know who say that's an expert. Why? Because that knowledge is hidden from the generality of people. And once one gains access to that, they call it an expert because they have this khibra. So they're khabir. So Allah is expert in all possible realms of endeavor and existence. So there's no limitation to Allah Ta'ala's uh, experience or Allah Ta'ala's expertise or those things known to Allah that might be hidden to others. وَهُوَ مِنْ صِفَاتِ ذَاتِهِ وَمَنْ عَرَفَ أَنَّهُ خَبِيرٌ فَيَتَحَقَّقْ أَنَّ مَا قُسِمَ لَهُ لَا يَفُوتُهُ The one who knows that Allah is well informed then let that person actualize that whatever has been uh, destined to be portioned out for them in this world will never pass them by because Allah is informed of what their risk will be. And the one and, and, and what has not been proportioned out for them, they'll never attain it. And so knowing Allah is khabir, these the what? فَيَعْلَمْ فَيَعْلَمُ أَنَّ الْجَمِيعَ مِنْهُ تَعَالَى فَيَهُونُ عَلَيْهِ كُلُّ الْأُمُورِ So he knows that all of it's from Allah. What he or she gets, what she, he or she misses, is all from Allah and Allah knows it and Allah has decreed it and Allah, Allah Ta'ala has manifested. Therefore, everything becomes easy for them. Why? Well, you don't stress out. I worked hard, I studied for nine months to pass the bar, and I filled the bar. Could you study so hard, you stressed out, and couldn't even think <coughs> when, <laughs> when you took the test. But you know, it's all from Allah. I did my best, and it wasn't meant to be. You can relax, and I, I should have studied more. I should have studied less. I was just stressed out, and everything was swimming in my head. You just say, Alhamdulillah, Qadbar Allah wa Allah decreed something, what Allah decreed came to pass. He knew it was going to be like this, so I'm good with it. Let's go have some non existent tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good with it. I don't have a problem with it. Allah al Musta'an. Allah al Muhammad. So he says, Rahimullah. <laughs> drawing close to Allah through this name. from the aspect of devotion, being satisfied with Allah's knowledge. and so and leaving off, showing off and faking things for the sake of other than Allah. Because Allah knows what, what you're hiding. Allah knows the, the, what's behind that facade. 
So you might be fooling this person, but you're not fooling Allah, so why even bother? Because Allah, not the person, is going to judge us. So sometimes you meet a person like, who might have been incarcerated, and then they got out back on the streets and weren't doing so good. But you were going into prison, so they know you're a Muslim, and they're supposed to be a Muslim. But they are a Muslim. They just slipped up. They might have a paper bag with something haram to drink in it. And they see you come and put it behind their back. They're like, as lucky. It's like, when that happens, the brother Allah knows what's behind your back. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to judge you. You know, you could, people slip up. But, you know, what, what's that? Allah khabir. Allah is informed concerning what's behind your back. It doesn't matter if you're in front and back under your coat. Allah knows. And so don't fake. Don't pretend. Don't, don't try to fool people. Because even if you succeed, you're not fooling Allah. And Allah, not the people, will judge you. Will judge us. Not the people. That we think we're fooling. We're not fooling Allah. Allah is khabir. Allah is well informed. So what? وَتَرْكَ بِهَا مُتَصَنْعِ لِغَيْرِ When the jihad and tahalluq from the direction of adorning ourselves with the truth, أَحْصِيُّ الْقِبْرَةِ فِالْقُبْرَةِ الْمِيَّةِ وَالْمِيَّةِ الْحَصِبُ الْمِيَّةِ بِمَا يَجِبُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ عُدَنْدُ So, adorning ourselves with this characteristic of attaining expertise, trying to be well informed, both our worldly and our religious and worldly affairs to the extent uh, as possible. Uh, concerning what's obligatory for us and what's So we should try to be well informed, highly educated. We should try to know our deen. Whatever worldly profession that we're in, we should try to uh, be the very best at Allah has ordained excellence in this area. So we should try to be expert. So we're going to continue. This was a little bit of a After next week, next week is very Three weeks. Participate in the discussion of the book, Servants of Allah and the Prophet. If you don't have a copy of it, it's very fast. Don't order it from Amazon. Help the small, struggling community. And so the week after that, the week after that, the first two Thursdays. That gives us more time to apply the lessons of the night lesson and more knowledge and information. You go to Houston, you move to Houston. I remember you from the Bay Area. Think about Jenna. I remember you from the Dunya. <laughs> And it won't be like, how, how did you end up here? <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you the same question. How about you? So all the drink from the mind of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a quick
quenching strength, whereby they're after the government's vengeance and those who are oppressed. So the law and the city of Muhammad is the reason you see that. I'm not going to 